Hey, how y'all doing? It's your boy Big Sir here with Timothy Hill, man. Just excited to talk to you guys about what God is doing right now through the book of Ephesians. Uh, me and my life group, we're studying this. Uh, me and my wife, we're getting time together this week. We studied this together. It's been great. It's been extremely fruitful. I just hope that you guys are accepting my challenge last week and are diving into that word and growing with us. And uh, super excited to see um, or, or to get any messages from you all to see what God has shown you directly from the book of Ephesians as well um and so i want to read in the in the book of ephesians in chapter 2 starting at verse 11 um, there's so much disunity going on in the world around us um and we as the church must be unified we as the church must promote peace and must promote unity and show the world what family looks like a lot of people are longing uh, to be a part of a family um I, I think about some of our guys um uh, one specific story of a guy that i was sitting down talking with and he was telling me um about his family he said deontay i really have no family he said you know my family in fact is my gang he said my mom she told me she don't love me when i came here to timothy hill um, he said, my father, he's never been there. He said, um, all I got is my baby sister. I got my gang. He said, in fact, uh, the dude that jumped me in the gang, he died in my arms. He said, that's my family. Um, and, and I remember leaving that conversation feeling really sad, um, sad for him and his story, um, but also for the church. Um, because so often, man, um, we are overlooked when it comes to the family. And, and, and the reason why is because we look so dysfunctional um, and, and, and we do that by attacking each other on social media, um, by gossiping within the church, really grieving the Holy Spirit um, and creating disunity amongst the body. Church, we got to get out of that. Um, we got to get out of that. If we can't overcome differences and, and really love each other, um, I love what um, Tony Evans said. I posted on my page. It says we can we can embrace our differences with a common commitment to Christ because we are at peace with one another through our peace with God. So through our peace with God, that brings us peace with one another. Yes, we're different. Yes, I'm black. You may be white, Hispanic, whatever it may be. But your love and your commitment to Christ, my love and my commitment to Christ should draw us near each other in, in that point nearer to him um, together. And so we can work together. We can build together. We talk about the church and X all the time and, and how they were looking out for each other. I'm sure all of them weren't the same. Um, there were men, there were women, there were children, there were old people, there were Jews, there were Gentiles. People were growing astronomically all over the place. Why? Because people were legitimately loving each other despite the differences. And we got to get to that point. Um, and I didn't, I didn't mean to go off on that tangent because I want to read this verse. So starting in verse 11, therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth um, and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ, Jesus, you are once were far away, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So they're speaking to the Gentiles right here in this text because remember, they weren't part of the Jewish covenant. But he's saying now Jesus came, the cross came, the cross is done. He rose from the barrier that separated the Jew and the Gentile is done. Everyone has access to the Father now. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. It doesn't matter. Everyone has that access to the Father now. He says, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups, Jew and Gentile, one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Man. 
the power of the church, the power of our unity. We are called to be family. Um, and I want to read another excerpt from Tony Evans' Bible, his study Bible, which, man, I pray you guys get this. It packs a lot of power. I'll be reading like, oh, I don't know how he came up with that, but that's good. So I'm going to read this part, man, because it's so good um, how he explains it. He says, God wants us to have a complete view of the cross. The cross that gets you to heaven is the same cross that led to the creation of something new on earth. The church, heaven's community, a race of people. The church is united in Jesus Christ in spite of believers' individual differences. We are to practice the one another's of scripture, developing spiritual relationships and growing spiritually together. The church is more than a corporate gathering on Sunday because when that corporate gathering is over, we as the church still march on. And we saw that. We got to see that when the church building was locked down, people still loving on each other, people still being there for the poor, being there for the needy. We got to see that, though we didn't see a lot of that loving in the media because that's not what the media is going to portray in this world. There was a lot of that going on. I know specifically with my church, I know it was going on in many other churches. I'm sure people were reaching out. There are still people that need hurt. Uh, help people that are hurting people that people that are sick people that need prayer people that need funds and i'm sure many churches are doing that but that's not what people are going to portray and we just got to understand that people don't want to see good the media pushes out havoc a lot of people are pushing out havoc and chaos but we as the church if you remember the text we're called to peace that's what the cross did it unified two groups of people the jew and the gentile to come together and work together as we build and grow together towards jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. God's unity is so important. A sorority, a fraternity should not be a better family than the church. A gang should not be looked at as a better family than the church. When people see a family, when people think of the word family, it should come out church. That should be the first thought that comes to people's mind. Church, there are so many families that are broken because fathers leave or mothers leave or our parents die, or divorces happen, and, and, and people long to be a part of something. So if that family aspect is not there, then they run to the gangs, and they run to stuff like that because they want to be a part of something. We can think about teams that we be on, and the, and the best teams that we've been on are those teams where, man, we were all clicking together, we loved each other, we grinded hard together. Like, like stuff like that means a lot. Being a part of a family means a lot. I hear so many stories from the guys that we work with that, that just want to be part of a family and if you can love on them and let them know somebody cares about them that makes a huge difference it makes a huge difference guys um and, and, and i know I'm, I'm excited about this but but i just want to preach this unity piece because i know it's not being preached out there a lot right now there's a lot of chaos a lot of habit going on that is not christ that is not Christ. If we read this text, Christ is peace. Christ is unity coming together in the midst of what's going on around with the with the um with the, with the issues with the police department and stuff like that and the racial injustice. All that stuff is clear. It's evident. How do we attack it as a church? We unify. We come together with our black brothers, our black sisters. Mexicans, whoever, whatever race, it doesn't matter. We come together and we work together as a body of believers to fight that cause. We work together. This group and this group don't attack each other on Facebook. We work together. We love each other and we show the world what family looks like. How can we advance this together? Yes, racial injustice, race is an issue. Stuff like that is happening. Police are attacking black men. It's happened to me. People, it's happening. How do we fix it? We don't fix it with being angry and teaching another generation how to hate because that won't fix the issue. How do we fix it as a family of believers? We come together. We work in peace. We work in harmony. We show them what people together with one like mind and that's loving on people and building each other up in Christ. There's power in that. There's power in community. There's great power in unity. And if we express that to the world and they buy into that picture of family, Man, this world would look different. Love would be shown all over this world and hate wouldn't be taught. I love you guys. I thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day. Y'all be blessed.